Welcome to Holly's Creations. Let's make this bridal bouquet. This is a ocean sea type theme with shells and pearls and beads. We're first going to start off by taking the bridal bouquet holder and adding the ribbon to it. You'll notice too on this bridal bouquet holder how it's colorful and it has pearls on it. That was done with Mod Podge and a napkin and I will show you that process down the road here. That's the next um, share that I do on this collective share. So we're going to first always add your ribbon. It's easier to do it before you build your bouquet out than after the fact. Always cut your um, ribbon a little bit longer than what you want because you can't add to it once you cut it away, but you can always trim it up. So measure twice, cut once. <laughs> so what I did is I wrapped that and I did the twist knot on it and now we're going to make a bow. And we're gonna wrap this a three loop bow. So I'm just showing you how to do this. These shares on this collective video are individually done on my channel under the playlist for florals and bridal bouquets. So if you wanted to watch the original one where it's a little different, this one is just the voiceover where I'm kind of walking you through it. You're more than welcome and I encourage you to do that. I go more step by step on that. So we're going to do one, two, three. We're going to make those little bunny ears and then we're going to fold it in half to make sure we have the center. And don't forget to subscribe and set your notify for you don't miss out on any shares that are coming up. Now we're going to use a zip tie or you can use a pipe cleaner and we're going to get that center and just snug that down nice and tight. <laughs> the last thing you want to happen when you're throwing your bouquet or you're walking down the aisle is to have your bow fall apart. <laughs> so let's make sure we have that nice and secure. Once you have your bow on, you're going to fluff it out and you're going to make it smooth and get aggressive. It's okay. You don't, they're not fragile. They're not going to fall apart on you. Leave your tails on your bow nice and long. You're going to trim those up after you add your florals and your brocade is totally done. Then you go in and you trim up those tails. Once you're doing them a few times, then you can trim it up anytime you want. But to start with, let's just leave those on there and that way you can get a visual. You can get a feel for how you want it to look. So on this flasky, you notice how it has a little top to it? This is so cool because um, you can have a beverage in there. We won't say what kind, but you can have a beverage in there. Or you can throw your keys, your lady whatnots, if it happens to happen during that time. Sorry. Or you can throw your money, your credit card, your lipstick. So it's a neat little way to have your things that you want immediately in your possession. Or like I shared, you can put a beverage in there. You can take the straw out if you're not going to use it for a beverage. I tried to find these flaskies and I don't know if they're still making them. If you find them, give me a shout out. Um, if not, um, this might be something that somebody might be interested in buying up the company. This is a great little product. But I wanted to share that with you. I reached out to them when they were on Shark Tank and I asked them to send me one for I could do a demo and they were gracious enough to do so. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to share that with you. So you'll notice here too how I added those long green stems. I decided I didn't like them and you'll see that later they're going to come out. <laughs> Another thing is when you're cutting your flowers to build your bouquet, cut them longer than you think you need. I have seen so many young um, people that are creating these florals and they cut them short like how they think they're going to look in there but you need that stem to shove down into the form and then you want some build up um, some space between for you can make like a dome so leave them about an inch to an inch and a half long you can always trim them down later what I would suggest too is get two of your bridal bouquet holders that you're going to build out one that you can play with because when you're poking your flowers in and out and in and out it's going to break down that foam um, so you want to make sure that you play with it you get it the way you want you got the length you want and you can use your good one that you haven't destroyed <laughs> and then you can build it out and then also what i do you'll see this little melting pot here Secure your flowers once you're sure where you want them to go with some glue. That way they don't fall apart during the you know the day and when you toss it and such. So that's what we're going to do right now. And then I use a, a 
vase to set my holder in with a wide mouth on top. You can use like a large pickle jar or whatever you have handy. Um, take the pickles out first. <laughs> Just kidding, but you can. You can use um, like a wide mouth jar that's tall enough to where that'll hold that um, handle down in there and just go ahead and play with it and build build it out. So remember, the key is leave your stems longer than you think. You can always trim them down and then the same with your ribbon because you can always trim that down as well. So as you're cutting and adjusting as you build out your bouquet, the top is going to be a little bit longer than the stems in the next row are going to be shorter and that's going to give you your dome effect. So don't cut them all the same length. Top a little bit longer, shorter, and then build it out from there. And you're going to start in the center and circle it around. I mean, you can go willy-nilly too, wild, if that's the type of bouquet you'd like to make. And you're going to see some of those going forward that I've made um, as samples and such in this video share. You'll also notice too the beads that are laid on the tabletop there. That's to add some colors. That's the bridal's um, request as far as what her wedding party was, was the tills and the blues and such and the ivory and a little bit of peach. So I actually bought some nail polish that color and painted uh, those beads that color to match and that way she could actually use that nail polish for her wedding day as well and with the bridesmaids and such if they wanted to. So there's the finished product without the long leaves on it and we're just going to work on this a little bit more. Let's see if we can move this a little bit closer for you can see this. I hope you can see this a little bit better now. I noticed it was kind of pushed off and I apologize for that. Sometimes I get going into my creative mode and it's like, oh, I need, I need to be able to have this where you can watch what I'm doing. <laughs> so we're going to continue to trim down um, the different flowers here. We're going to add the different colors to accentuate the bridal party. And you just continue to fill in all those little spaces. Don't overcrowd because you're still going to have your baby's breath and your embellishments and the ribbons that you're going to put into this. So let's just build this off and I will be back shortly. <laughs> Just a little tip here, when you're building out your bridal bouquet, your top mound is going to be a little bit higher and then you're going to cut, cut your next layer of flowers a little bit shorter, like maybe a half an inch to a fourth of an inch shorter. Because those are going to, you can shove them into the form and kind of make them the, what you want. Now again, you can't, uh, you can't do that with real flowers, you have to use um, the sticks, the flower picks and stuff you, and wire to make it. but. Um, strong and durable, but this is for fake flowers, but you can use the same idea for fresh flowers as well. You just have to remember that you have to wrap your stems with a wire and a pick, um, otherwise they're going to not stand the test of time for the wedding and they're going to look pretty sad by midway through the wedding. So you'll notice here too that I'm using a nice heavy duty cutter for my stems so you can pick those up at Home Depot any hobby store usually has them too but they're a little bit more and you can also pick them up like at Lowe's any any hardware store so get yourself a good um, set of cutters don't use your scissors to cut wires and such of this ruin them 
what I'm building this on is too, you'll notice it's just a glass vase that I set it down at. I gave it the height that I could build it out with. So that's a, if you're out yard selling and you, or you get some flowers, hang on to the vase because that's perfect. Or even a big mayonnaise jar or something. Something where you could set it down in there and just kind of spin it and work with it. Remember too that uh, most of these supplies that I pick up, I buy my flowers, I buy quality flowers when I'm doing bride bouquets and such because I just feel like if you're going to put your time into it, use quality products. So I pick most of my flowers are from either Michael's, um, Joann's, or um, Hobby Lobby, and I buy them when they're on sale. The best time to get your flowers when they're on sale is after the holiday of whatever color yet that you're looking for. So as we continue to build this bridal bouquet out, we're going to add some greenery in here. So when you're making your flower arrangements and such, never throw away your greenery or your little loose pieces because you can use those in other crafts and other projects. A lot of these green leaves that I'm using are leftovers from other projects that I've done and I'm just blending them in. We're also going to be adding baby's breath in here just to give it some pop and of course I'm making this for the style as requested. Now that we're adding some neutral colors in here as well as to make the white pop and then the blue to come out, you'll see um, the accents going in here next. Hey, I just wanted to remind you while you're watching that if you do like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notify. If you're watching this on Facebook, remember to follow and like for you get to see the uh, new shares that come out. And then also I would like to remind you too that when you're picking up your supplies and such, always look for those to be on sale. And I have on my Amazon page some of the different materials that I use. And so some of the different flowers that I use that you see coming up in the other shares that I'm doing, look at there's the nail polish. Um, you'll see that they're on my supply list, on my Amazon profile. And that's really easy to find one. It's down in my descriptions here, as well as it's just Hallie's Creations. So it's really easy to find, or Hallie Osborne Jonas. I have it both ways. And it's my personal profile that I tweaked and made it for my profile for my creative um, pages and such. I don't have affiliated links at this time, nor do I desire to have them. Now I will down the line, because of course they're gonna be beneficial. But right now my goal is just to teach you how to make stuff, share the process, to help you feel comfortable um, doing these things. Just, if I can do these, I promise you, you can do these. Just take your time with it. You may not like the first one you do, but that's okay. If you don't glue it in, you're not, you're not committed, right? Once you like the way it looks, then you glue them in and you're all set and you're good to go. So just remember the biggest thing is leave your stems long, build out your bouquet, and then you'll you know, look at it, take a little time with it, and if you think, yeah, that's the style I like, but I want it a little bit tighter, then you just take it apart, trim down your um, stems, and put them back in. Now once you do that a couple of times, then you're gonna be comfortable just going for it. You're gonna know the, the length of your stems. You're gonna get comfortable on how to cut and where to put them and stuff. The biggest thing is like, you know, like when you're decorating your home or whatever, you want that little feng shui going. So you want your um, your flowers to kind of flow and complement and accent each other as well as the color. So you don't want to overpower of one color unless that's what you're going for. Um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you. So now we're, now we're gonna add some fillers because I like fillers. I love baby's breath. I love white. If you follow me, you know I love white. Um, so we're going to put white in here and just give it some um, fullness and some pop. And then we're going to, um, I'm going to actually run and get myself a cup of coffee. And I'll be back.
gonna fluff it up, make it all pretty. And yes, I went and got my cup of coffee. <laughs> but um, we're pretty much done. But then I didn't like the way those long um, leaves were hanging on there. It just didn't do it for me. So you'll see where I'm, I'm gonna take those off. <laughs> but you fluff out your bow, you get to um, make it all pretty and it's good to go. So what I love about this particular holder, like I shared again, the flasky holder, is that you can throw a tube of lipstick into that little holder if you don't want to use it as a little beverage um, um, sipper cup, or your keys, or money, or whatever, and um, you've got your little whatnots that you need, your, your lady business stuff if need be, <laughs> and it's nice and handy with you. And there you go. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that share. Hang tight, the next share coming up is how to make that bridal bouquet holder all pretty like that with the Mod Podge and the beads and such. <laughs> I'm always messing around with it when I'm done. You thought, thought I was done, right? I decided to put some peach in there to make it match the, the bouquet holder just to bring it together. So it's, there you go. I had a lot of fun making this one. It's really, really um, with the, the seashells and such. It was just so much fun. And you'll see here how I just took that spear and I um, put that into the flower because the stem had, it had popped off the stem. So there you go. Just a little creative trick there as well. Hope you enjoyed this share. And um, hang tight, and we're going to jump on to the next one here in a few moments while I drink my coffee. So this is the one that I was telling about. I'm going to show you how to mod podge this and how you can put all those little fun things in that holder. And I have to be real honest, I don't even know if they make these um, flasky holders anymore. I, I know it was a new company. I saw them on Shark Tank. I reached out to them and asked them to send me one for I could do a video share for you. But I, I haven't been able to find them since then. So um, if you can find them, yay. If not, that might be a company for somebody that has some money to invest because I think if it was a marketed a little differently who knows i'm sure it would take off i think it's a pretty cool idea and you don't always have to use it as a beverage i'm just showing you how you could put your little whatnots in there but ta -da! there you go so now we're going to take and cover <laughs> i'm being silly <laughs> that's me that's how i roll um now we're just gonna i'm gonna show you how to do this with, with the mod podge and what's really cool about this is, you know, a lot of weddings, you have your bridal um, napkins and invitations and everything. So if you even wanted to use that for the napkin to cover it with, you totally could. But what I did is I found a napkin that I thought was pretty. You thin it down to the thinnest layer. Most napkins are two or three ply. So you take it down to that one ply. And then you're going to um, trim it down. And I cut the patterns out to fit how I wanted it to fit on the actual bouquet holder. Because it is not square. It's it's unique and different. It's got some curves, just like us girls. So you have to kind of make it fit, just like you do when you put your spandex on. <laughs> got to squeeze it on there. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to cut the pattern out. And then we're going to apply it on with some Mod Podge. I'm using the matted, but you can use the gloss as well. Uh, you, I am using a brush on this one, and the reason being is because the sponges, they're not going to blend and um, hug that um, plastic, that mold. So first thing I'm going to do is wrap the, um, the stem part of it, the handle, get that on there nice, and we're going to trim that down. The trick is not to over layer. You just want to keep it nice. You want to have the part of the flowers pop out. You notice how I showed the blue flower to the blue flower. Make things match up. And now we're just going to simply Mod Podge this on. And another little trick with me when I do Mod Podge is I get my brush wet first and then I use my Mod Podge and it just makes it work better. And I always have a little thing of water by you because water uh, Mod Podge is really sticky so you're going to get it on your fingers. And then how I sprayed that with a little bit of water just to make the napkin um, 
a little bit more pliable. So just those little tricks that make it smooth on there a little bit easier. Now we're gonna wrap the base of it and you'll 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 see. And the thing to think about that's really cool about this is don't feel like you gotta get it perfect because you don't. Because one, it's gonna dry, even with those little seams and those little creases, it's gonna give it character, number one. And number two, you're going to go through when it's all said and done and you're gonna accent it with your flat back beads. So if there's a spot that's not laying right, you can, you can cover it up. <laughs> so that's what I did here. So just continue to cover it up lightly and then you're gonna put your accents on there. You can use your homemade Mod Podge, most definitely if you want to make your, you know, your homemade glue Mod Podge. But here's my take on that, and I, and I don't work for Mod Podge or anything. I get no kickback or anything. It's just a product that I absolutely love. Um, one of my co-workers back in the day turned me on to Mod Podge, and um, I have been using it ever since. And I absolutely love it. It doesn't crack when it dries. It stands the test of time. So if you are looking at wanting it to last, especially if you're making a bridal bouquet, you don't want that yellowing in the years to come or cracking, I would suggest just using Mod Podge. It doesn't cost that much. You don't need that much. You don't need a big bottle like how I have. This is a small little bottle. You can pick it up at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. 25. Same with the paintbrush. Most of the items I use are from the Dollar Tree um, or the craft stores. So there's that little tidbit of information for you. Go through and smooth that up with your fingers, trim it down, let it dry. Then when it's dry, you're going to take an exacto knife and just trim it down a little bit more. So you're just going to set that aside and just let it dry. So now that it's dried and I told you we were going to trim it down with an exacto knife but you didn't see that part. I'm so sorry. Um, we're just going to take a nail buffer that you use for your nails and just buff off the corners and that will take it um, right off nice and clean. Super easy peasy. So much fun. And that uh, Mod Podge process that you're learning to do on this uh, bridal bouquet holder, you can use on everything. <laughs> See that play all day? That's Mod Podge. There's a nap that same napkin actually, Mod Podge, John, to that behind in the background. So, yeah, there's just all kinds of stuff you can do with Mod Podge. So now we're just going to bling it out with flat back pearls. And that's the trick. Don't buy round pearls, they need to be flat back. Anything you embellish on anything like that, you need flat backs. What I'm doing is putting an extra coat on there just to seal it off. And now we're just going to go through and um, add these little um, flat back pearls to whatever floats our boat. And the thing, <laughs> that little thing I'm using I picked up off of Amazon, it's actually a nail art um, rhinestone placer. So it works really good for this kind of stuff. It has kind of like a wax tip on it, then a small fine tip on the other. So it's really easy to use. It takes a little bit getting used to it, or you can use your tweezers. You'll probably, yep, there's the tweezers. I knew I was going to be going to the tweezers. Um, so you have the different ways of doing it. If you're trying to glue this on with the glue gun, uh, don't do that to yourself. <laughs> I mean, you can, but it's going to get messy and gunky. I would just say put your layer of Mod Podge on there, set your beads on, let them dry, and then you're going to go over it again with another layer of Mod Podge, which is going to secure them even more. Mod Podge dries clear. Everybody say that with me. Mod Podge dries clear. So it's so cool. You can use it on anything. If you have that matte, it's going to be like a matted flat, and if you have the gloss, then it's going to be glossy. 
Now what I'm doing here is I'm giving it a little bling bling, so I've sprayed a little glitter on it. You know why? Because I can. <laughs> I just thought it would be fun. So I threw some glitter on it. So now, you know, you see it before we put it all together. You saw how we made the bridal bouquet holder. And now we're going to go on to the next video share here. I'm real happy with how it turned out and it was made with love so <laughs> that's just the thing when you're making it and stuff but there's just a little bit more of you into it so this next bridal bouquet coming up the little hearts ha, ha, this was designed by my two granddaughters yes it was <laughs> I have to give them full credit for the design and then Grammy stepped in and said let's do this too and so and then I put it together for them so you'll see here on the bridal bouquet holder, right now we're making the loop three times because I like that big fluffy bow to tie on the bridal bouquet holder. And we are also going to show you how to make that lace handle bridal bouquet holder as soon as I show you how to make this um, bridal bouquet. <laughs> so we're going to, like I shared in the first one, decorate the holder first. So that's what we're doing here now. Always fold your bows to find your center, that way they're not wonky. And then put a little um, snip snip in there. Don't cut too far because it will fall apart. Just a tiny little snip will do it. If you have that wire edges, use um, a wire or a um, zip tie or a pipe cleaner. Pipe cleaners are great. So we're going to make our bow here and then we're going to add it to the pliable cable. Now that we've added it to the bridal bouquet holder, we're going to fluff it out and we're going to make our bouquet. And here's that little um, vase that I used just to set my bouquet holder into. And we're going to build a way. Now this was, like I shared earlier, designed by my two granddaughters. The one that is her bridal bouquet and then um, her her sister. They um, It was so cute because my, my girls were FaceTiming as they did this. The oldest one wasn't um, visiting for the summer because she was planning her wedding. And then my JD um, was talking with her and they were designing it. It was so cute. They went, oh, Grammy, paint this here. Can you do this, that, there? with like, sure, let's try, you know. So you'll notice some of the flowers have spray paint on them uh, because these are her, her wedding colors and this is what she wanted. And this is, this is how she wrote. She likes the red and black. And it turned out really pretty. Her, her wedding was, and you'll see like a um, on the bottle shares, if you want to check that out, there on there there is a, um, and I'll try to remember to pop this on here as I edit this, but a wine bottle that I gifted them that I put their wedding invitation on. So check that out too if you want to see how to do that. And it's Mod Podge as well. The, the trick with Mod Podge though is if you Mod Podge a bottle of wine, don't put it in the refrigerator afterwards because Mod Podge will reactivate. So don't do that. Learning curve. So anyway, <laughs> we're doing the same thing on this bridal bouquet that we did on the other one. We are starting in the top and the middle and then we're spinning it around. And for me, this one went faster because it was already designed by the girls. So 
just adding all the different flowers in there that they wanted making sure we glue the stems down as we put them in because we've already pre-cut and pre-measured and already laid it all out there's the bottle that i was telling you about i thinned out that wedding invitation very thin like we did on the napkins and i put it onto the uh, celerosa bottle of wine making it all matched and it just turned out really cute um, so and then i have like a little picture of them in there as well So let's continue to build out this bouquet and add some more cute flowers and accents in there and fillers. And then this one would be pretty much done. And then I will show you how we did the lace on the bridal bouquet holder handle. That's kind of fun and different and unique, right? <laughs> and it did turn out pretty good. I think the girls did a good job um, designing that. I was uh, very pleased with them. And it's just a different style. And it went extremely well with her little her little wedding. Thought I'd share the sweet little picture of her country wedding with her daddy and her little brother giving her away. That was just so precious. Um, but yeah, that's that's my Nina, my Angelina, and her daddy and her little brother Lincoln. So now we're back to making the bouquet, and we're just going to continue to build it dip those um, end pieces into the glue pot or if you have a glue gun just tap it with your glue gun on the end fill in all your gaps and never 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 leave that bottom open um, you want to decorate that bottom part too so now we're going to add some flowers in there just to give it some fullness after we add the flowers in to give it fullness it will be pretty much done and they're pretty easy. I want to encourage you to at least try it. You never know. And then after this one, there's going to be a video on how to modge podge and create that holder. So hang tight for that. Meanwhile, we're going to finish this up and we'll um, talk to you soon when we do the next um, video share. This one's pretty much done. We're just going to fluff it out, trim up, trim it up and Put some baby's breath in here and some embellishments and we're done. I also like to invite you to subscribe and set you notified for you don't miss out on future video shares. This particular video share is actually on my playlist under bridal bouquets and florals. So you could find this one as well as other bridal bouquets. And as I continue to create and grow my channel, of course, there'll be more. Um, once we get moved and settled into our new home, I'll have my new studio all set up and there'll be all kinds of fun and unique different shares going on. I have so much stored up in my brain to share with you. <laughs> so um, this is just one of the many different things that you will find on Hallie's Creations. We do, um, well, I do. <laughs> I share um, painting as well as glass painting, jewelry making, DIYs. Oh yeah, I'm spraying it with snow. <laughs> That's this can of snow that you get from the um, during the holidays, just to tone it down a little bit, little bit and bring it all together. So yeah, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. So ta-da! And then we're also going to spray it with just a little bit of glitter, and that's going to bring that bow and the handle all together as well. So anyway, getting back to uh, what's on my channel. <laughs> 
If you're looking for unique um, creations and different things to do, I do have like a DIY um, playlist as well as a jewelry play playlist, um, wreath making, crafts, and all kinds of fun stuff. So just go on there and check it out. There's over 400 plus videos and different um, art and creative things that you can look at. So now we're going to jump on here and I'm going to show you real quick how to mod podge that um, beautiful lace with the embellishments onto your um, bouquet holder here. Here I just sprayed it with the black paint. So I just kind of faked that and showed that because we wanted it dry in order to work with to do the video. Then we're going to use Mod Podge. Mod Podge is really cool and I, I always say this, it dries clear. Isn't that lace pretty? So anyway, Mod Podge dries clear. So if you want to do the matte or the shiny, either one would work just fine. The, the key is um, when you're Mod Podging like your bottle art and stuff like that, if you make a really cool bottle and you still have the wine in it or whatever and you want to refrigerate it, it will reactivate the Mod Podge. So if you're going to do something like that and you want to Mod Podge your bottle, use the dishwasher Mod Podge and let it sit and cure like it's supposed to for a month before you actually refrigerate it and stuff. But otherwise, don't put it in the refrigerator because it will reactivate your Mod Podge. So anyway, that's just a little tidbit that I learned, learning curve that I learned because <laughs> I made her that bottle of um, her wedding invitation bottle that you saw on the other share. I oops and I put that in the refrigerator thinking I was doing the right thing and it reactivated the Mod Podge. It didn't freak me out because I had created it so I knew how to fix it. But um, yeah, it, it got all white and cloudy again and I had to re kind of work the Mod Podge and let it dry again. So you don't want to do that. Don't don't put it in the refrigerator. Only if you use the dishwasher Mod Podge and you let it cure pop properly. This is just the standard Mod Podge. And don't worry about it too when you're wrapping it. It's going to kind of be weird and wonky on you and that's okay. You're just going to gently tap it down and trim it down and leave your end down um, long because you can trim that off after it dries with an X-Acto knife. So it's all good. So you're just going to wrap it and then tap it down, trim it up, Mod Podge it super heavy, and then you're good to go. Let it dry and then you get a little X-Acto knife out there and you're just going to trim it down. So it's not that hard. And I use the brush versus the sponge um, and here's why the bristles in the brush gets down into um, all that fabric, all the netting of that fabric. So it really holds it nice and in place. So it's going to be nice and secure for the bride. And it did stand the test of time. It didn't fall apart. <laughs> so, and you can find this lace pretty much at any fabric store, but if you want to get a really good deal, Yard Sale and Goodwill Salvation Army, check out the thrift stores because they have the vintage um, different materials in their tops and stuff, and you're just going to cut a piece of it out. So yeah, kind of be, think outside of the box. <laughs> In fact, I picked this one up, I think, at a at an auction. It had a box of um, different things in it, and this, was, this piece of fabric was in there. So you never know what you're going to find when you go out hunting. But there you go. Isn't that pretty? And now we're just going to, you know, put the bow on it like I shared in the other video. We always bow it up first, and then we build out the actual bouquet. So we're just going to show you this bow real quick here, loop it, and um, then we're going to jump on to another video. <laughs> just a reminder too, when you're trimming um, into your ribbon to um, put the zip tie or the pipe cleaner, don't cut too deep because it will fall apart. You just, just tiny little snips for it will get in there in that groove and that way you can twist and pop it. So we've already seen this one on the video before, so we're just going to let this run and then we're going to jump to the next video. So I'll see you at the next video. I think the next one is Sunflowers. Now, 
This was my first live video and I contemplated if I was going to share it or not with you, but they just turned out so pretty. So even though I look kind of weird as I do this video, it was such a rookie <laughs> when I first did this. The camera's too close and sorry about that, but you'll get the technique and you'll get the idea of how to do this. So here we're going to make a sunflower bouquet holder. This was a sample for a bride-to-be and I'm just going to walk you through it real quick. So on this one we're going to show you how to put the stems in the bottom of your bouquet holder. Now on this particular bouquet holder I didn't go that route, but I'm going to show you the technique anyway. So I just cut off the bottom, then I glued the stems into the bottom of the bouquet holder, and that way it gave it the effect of, of a loose um, bouquet hold, but you had the um, form and everything from the actual foam top so <laughs> and if you want to hear what I'm saying I actually have this video on my playlist so you can jump over to the playlist and you can watch me muddle through it <laughs> but it's kind of fun it was one of my first time brought up okay holders that I had done um, for my YouTube channel so you know it was a learning curve, but the technique is still here. And I'm going to show you a few things in here that um, you'll see where I try something then I don't go with that and I go with something else. It's okay to change your mind as you're making and creating things. So if you have a visual in your mind how you want it, it's not turning out that way, just adjust accordingly. <laughs> it's all good. So we're just going to um, load this handle up a little bit with some glue for those stems will stay in there and that's how we're going to get that effect so now that we're getting the effect of a loose bridal bouquet with the stems hanging out there we are going to jump forward and we are going to wrap this yes we are any minute now <laughs> This was a live share when I did this on Facebook. <laughs> so it's just a recording of a live share. I could go in and dub all this out, but I left it in there for you could see the process. So now we're just using those wire cutters. Remember what I say, use um, a strong cutter. Don't um, use your scissors. You'll destroy the, your scissors if you do that. So use, use your cutters and you can pick those cutters up at any hardware store. They're about $10. They're probably $15 now because everything's gone up. But when I got them, they were about $10. So now we're just going to wrap that with the ribbon and make it all pretty. And then I'm going to take it all apart because I'm not going to like it. <laughs> so here's another bridal bouquet that I did where you can see where you can just fill the bottom up with the lace and then the um, flowers underneath it to match. And then the actual handle I wrapped with lace and ribbon. And... I shared earlier, always start when you're wrapping your bridal bouquet holder, start from the bottom and work your way up if you want your ribbons to hang from the base. It's just more secure that way. You see how it's all tw the twist knots with the lace? And that's a super easy technique to do. You just wrap it, twist it, and wrap it and twist it. That's all you're doing. And I just did that over lace. Remember to subscribe and set you notified. If you're following um, Facebook, don't forget to follow and like. This one here that I'm trying to show you, I'm so sorry about the recording. Um, it does get better as I do this longer. <laughs> but that's a bridal um, bead wrap that I did. So you, after the wedding, she could take that off and she can have that as a necklace or a bracelet. It's done with the wire wrap um, technique under... Um, so it's pretty easy to do. So that, that would be under the jewelry share. And this one here is just showing you uh, how you can just take the ribbon on the bottom and loop it and use your cassage, pearl tip cassage tip pins and cover up that bottom. But always cover up the bottom. Don't have it look unfinished because that's just, it's just, it's just not good, man. <laughs> It's just not good. Always finish it off. My little JD designed this one, and so it's kind of precious to me. We FaceTimed, and she's going, Grammy, put this here, put this there, put this here. And it turned out really cute. 
Okay, so now we're going to get back to the project of the day. And I'm showing you here how the stems are. And the reason I did that too is I was letting that glue set and dry a little bit before we did the wrap on here. Now keep in mind when we do this wrap, this is kind of what the they were wanting. But when it was all said and done, I just felt like the, the burlap just went on too thick. I didn't like the look of it. So I actually redid it. And you'll see that as we do the project here. But I wanted to go ahead and leave it on here for you to see how to do an easy wrap if you wanted to do that. So first thing what I do is I glue it to make it secure and then I'll just start wrapping that actual. And it's just loop, loop, loop. It's that easy. Like I said before, I wasn't a big fan of this wrap style, but I thought I would show it to you because uh, it is a, a learning technique and, <laughs> and I just wanted to, you know, be real and, and just kind of put it out there and share with you. So anyway, we're just going to glue that down and then we're going to lay some lace over it. You'll notice on this one, I'm making it a little differently. I'm adding the baby's breath in first, and that's because the sunflowers, they're, they're um, pretty uniform, and so I can see kind of where they're at. And it was also a learning curve, <laughs> so, but I wanted to get on here and share that with you, um, that you can build it different ways. So building in different ways is okay. It's like on this one here, I'm doing like a ball of baby's breath, and then I'll be placing the sunflowers inside of that. So that's that's what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm playing with my white flowers. <laughs> I love white. So it's like, oh, I'm gonna put a lot of white flowers in here. And we're just gonna build it out. These sunflowers I actually picked up at Amazon, if you can believe that and also Michael's. So those are the two places that these were picked up from. And then the baby's breath, I believe I picked up off of Amazon. I'm very picky about my baby's breath, the fake baby's breath, because you want to make sure it looks good when you're using it. You don't want the plastic looking baby's breath. That, that's important. So use a strong cutter to cut your stems, as I showed before, because those are wire stems. And uh, don't, don't, don't let them fool you. They're not, they're not all plastic. There's wire in there. So see, here's, here's, the, here's the rook, the rookie in me learning how to do Facebook and everything. When this first came out um, during COVID and I was doing these shares for my friends and family, I was, um, it was a learning curve for me. So I, like I said earlier, I, I apologized in advance. The filming on this one is not as well as the other ones. And things always get better in time because it's, it's a learning curve. You learn. So I wasn't learning how to make bouquets, but I was learning how to film it and to give it to you. I, I have done bouquets for years and years. As I, I used to be a wedding coordinator. So back, back in the day, <laughs> long time ago, so back in the 80s, um, 
A lot of fun doing that. So that's just another um, bouquet that I had made with the cascade with the sunflower, something more country, bigger, fuller. And we're just going to go on here and now we're just going to uh, build this out. And I try to show you how to make things the most easy way possible. Now, if you wanted to use this technique and use fresh flowers, as I've shared in the earlier videos, make sure you get your um, floral ribbon and your floral wire for you can um, support those stems. Otherwise, they will not hold up over time. So you want to make sure that you support your stems for when you're putting them down into the forms, you're not destroying your stems. Also, too, you kind of make your um, bouquets at the last minute so you want to make sure you have all your supplies and everything cut down and ready to go that way you can just put put like an assembly line and get it all done and keep them all fresh um, a little spritz of water on most flowers will keep them looking good unless you're using dyed flowers and you don't want to do that <laughs> but if you're using natural flowers for most cases a little sprint not a not a spray just a little sprint or a little mist will keep your flowers looking good when you're using real flowers, fresh flowers. These are fake flowers, so you can make them up in advance, you can play with them, you can manipulate them, and you can use and abuse them. So here's a little sample of how it turned out on the side there. The bride that wanted the sample for that wanted that bottle, the jute bottle, real simple for the table settings. So we made up a couple of samples for her. So we're just going to go in here and we're just going to pop these in. Now on Amazon, you can go on to Hallie's Creations on Amazon, and it's under Hallie's Creations, plus it's down in my description, the link for it. And you can see the different playlists I have, and I do have on, not my playlist, my supply list. So you can see on the supply list, um, like for florals, these particular flowers, who I bought them from, as well as when for the paints and all that stuff that I do. I have supply lists for different projects that I teach on my channel. So check that out on my Amazon. I don't have affiliate links at this time, but I will in the future, hopefully. There's another little thing, the bottle art and the wine glass to match. So that's on another video on my playlist if you wanna know how to do that. That was a champagne bottle, and that was a wine glass that had the sunflower design in it with the Mod Podge. So much fun to make those things. And they're really pretty centerpieces and they just kind of set you apart from the norm. So you're like, you did a little extra touch <laughs> and it's not that hard to do. A lot of these can be done during your bridal party. You're looking for something to do for your shower or whatever, or for your bridal party to get together. You can get the girls together, the guys together, or and just everybody can get together and you can have a night where you just do the champagne bottles or the glasses and they're super easy to do. So that gives you an idea on how to put that together and that's how you make the sunflower bouquet super easy peasy and now I'm going to show you how to make like a little boutonniere why not and a little corsage and then from there I think we're pretty much oh I got a surprise for you at the end I have another flower arrangement that I did but it's just a regular springtime sunflower flower arrangement so hang tight for that one and I'll see you in a bit So now that I've laid it all out and I know how I want it, I'm going to actually make the bouquet. <laughs> that was just playtime figuring it out. Over here on the side, you'll see how those bridal um, pearl wraps look on the bridal bouquet holder. This is the little toothpick with the ribbon, and that's how you poke it down into the star into the head. You can have those little ribbons pop out. Ta-da! Easy peasy. And you can use your um, pearl heads too on your corsages. 
large pearl head pins look really pretty. So now I'm going to show you some different wraps, different ways of doing it. Remember I said I wasn't a big fan of that, so we we're probably going to do something different. So I'm just going to show you how you can wrap it differently. This is, uh, I'm taking off the pearl handle part of it to show you underneath how you can twist it with just the real simple ribbon and you just wrap and twist, wrap and twist. And it gives you like that little French knot look and it's super easy to do. Always start from the bottom of the stems and you work your way up towards the base. And as I've shared earlier, you do that before you make your bouquet. Now, if you've made your bouquet and you forgot to do that, it's okay. No harm, no foul. But it's just easier to do it the other way. This bouquet was made for a bride who wanted more of the succulents added into the bouquet with the white, with the, that particular blue color was her wedding. So that's what we did for her. And then here you'll see a little boutonniere that you just simply take your little pieces, you wrap some of your fabric tape around, smoosh it together, it sticks quite easily. And you put it a little bit thick because you want to be able to stick a pin through it. And that's what we did here too, and you can just kind of loop the end of it. So all those little pieces of flowers that you have, hang on to them because you'll use them for future projects or a little boutonniere or a little corsage or whatever. This one here, I'm going to show you just real quick how to do that. You can pick up that floral tape at, believe it or not, the Dollar Tree for $1.25. Or any floral shop, you can pick it up as well as any hobby shop. Michael's has it, Hobby Lobby has it, and it's not that much. Like I, like I shared, you can get it at the Dollar Tree for $1.25. And you just twist and twist and stick and stick, and there you go, done. <laughs> If you're looking to make a little extra money during prom season, this is a great way to make um, a little sidekick, especially, you know, kids out there, you know, your teenagers and such. You make your own boutonnieres and make your own bouquets. They're not that hard to do. And um, they're fun. And they're a piece of you, too, so you can make them really unique and different however you want. But you just gather them together, use that floral tape, Twist, 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 put it on there, you're nicely padded, and you're done. And then uh, you can pick up the corsage pins with the pearl tips pretty much anywhere. I have them on my list, on my Amazon list. So if you want to check out my supply list on my Amazon profile page, you're more than welcome to check that out as well. See the ones I use. And that's it. That's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. So hang in there, and we are going to do one more flower arrangement because wait, there's more. <laughs> I decided to put on the flower arrangement on the end of this just for a little pop, just a little extra.
This little flower box was uh, given to me by a friend and I decided to do some stenciling on it. I took one of those foams that you can buy at the Dollar Tree or any floral shop or hobby shop, glued it to the bottom to make it stable. Took a little bit of um, paint and stenciled on their family and made a little bouquet out of it. It's not that hard to do. And I started with a tall flower, made like a triangle, and worked my way down. On here, I wanted it to look rough, so I didn't um, surface, I didn't um, seal the surface of the box. But if you want it to be nice and clean, you want to seal the surface of your box where it doesn't bleed first. But if you're going for just something fast and furious and you, you really, if you want it kind of a little messy, then don't seal, don't seal the wood. But if you want it clean and neat, seal the wood. Don't dab, dab this on heavy, just very lightly dab, dab, dab. See how it bled? I wanted that, so. Because it goes with the style of what I'm working with. So I'm just gonna glue that in to secure the foam bottom, Get be quite generous with it. And you'll notice how I did it on two sides because I put it in the middle and then pushed it towards the back. Measure out your stems and then cut them. Always cut them a little bit longer. That way you can always cut them down because most times you cut them longer and they're actually the right size. Use your heavy duty clippers, which you can buy at any hardware store. <laughs> and yeah, these flowers here I picked up at Michael's. And I think I got them after the spring um, inventory, so I got a pretty good deal on them. Remember how I share if you buy after the season, you'll get a pretty good deal on your flowers and your supplies, so keep that in mind. I always buy a year ahead, sometimes two, sometimes three. <laughs>
Remember when you're building your floral bouquets to add your height, notice how I have it in a triangle. I have the higher flower, then the, I'm layering it down, and then I'm adding my accent flowers to bring it all together. So have fun with it. Don't limit yourself. Start high, work low. Sometimes some people like to work low and work up. That's fine too. I start high and I work my way down. After we get it all built out, then we're going to make a really pretty bow. Well, more of a country bow. And then we'll be done. And that'll be, that'll be it. We'll be done. So, but I just wanted to put this in here for you, for you to see it. Notice on my work table here, too, the jewelry behind. That is actually some of the jewelry that I've made on our playlist. And that little flowers that I'm playing with there, because I'm contemplating stealing them out of there. <laughs> I was thinking, maybe I'll take those and put those in there. But that um, blue vase, that's hand-painted, and that is on my channel as well as how to do that. Those little beads back there, that's um, paper beads, how to make those. As well as like the little butterfly, that's water um, color butterflies. So there's all kinds of different things that are on my channel. It's not just about flowers, it's not just about painting, it's about making all kinds of neat stuff. So jump on there, check out the different playlists I have, feel free to explore. I have a ton of shorts and a whole bunch of videos. <laughs> and as I've shared earlier in the video share that once I get my studio back up and running, we get relocated again, I will start making more live creative shares to connect with you as well as unique and different things that I will be doing on our new home that I could share with you as well. So there's going to be all kinds of fun DIY projects and things like that coming up in the near future as well. So our house is being built right now, so we're kind of having to hang tight until that's done, but we're going to be part of that process, so I'm going to share that with you as well. So be looking for that. It'll be kind of fun. Um, so until next time, I really want to tell you thank you for hanging out with me at Hallie's Creations, and I'm just going to let this video um, pretty much finish up. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Have a good day and a better tomorrow, and peace out. Happy creating.
below. We're just going to pop that in there and we are done. So until next time, I hope you have fun creating neat stuff. Don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe and like. And I'm also on Facebook as well and Instagram and TikTok and Pinterest. So yeah, <laughs> I'm all over the place. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Have a good day and a better tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with me at Alex Creations. Don't forget to subscribe and like and set your notify. And if you're following on Facebook, like and follow. And check me out on Pinterest as well. And uh, yeah, peace out. It's been fun hanging out with you on this video. And I hope that we make more neat stuff together. Enjoy! And remember to subscribe!